So I've seen a surge of insomnia reported by patients in clinics since the COVID-19 pandemic began. According to a recent article by Washington Post, prescription sleep aid use has indeed increased by 15% during this time. Some experts have even termed this new insomnia epidemic as coronasomnia. It's not exactly unexpected, however. Many people are working from home while others are having to juggle work and homeschooling of their children. People have lost their jobs. Mental health disorders have been on the rise. I mean, all of this can affect our sleep and circadian rhythms and eventually our health. However, before you dash for the doctor's office in pursuit of a pill to cure your insomnia, just take my word and sleep on it first, no pun intended, because sometimes a few simple sleep hygiene changes may be sufficient to just resolve your sleep battles. Medications are an option, but they can be considered as last resort. You don't want to snooze on this one. So if it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Mash. Consider subscribing to this channel for up-to-date medical topics and headlines. So here are three steps to help reclaim your Z's. Step one, assess your sleeping environment. I mean, one of the top environmental factors that interferes with our sleep is screen use. Avoid using your smartphone within an hour of bedtime and during your sleep hours too. So if you've been using it as your clock or alarm on your nightstand, consider purchasing a separate alarm clock for this purpose because one flash of that blue light in the middle of the night is activating to the brain. Read a book at bedtime instead of watching TV or playing on your tablet. Just make sure that the book is not overly exciting. No action or highly stimulating reads. That would defeat the purpose. For those of you who are students, you know this tip is effective. Just bust out that organic chemistry textbook and you'll be out like a light. For those of you who say you simply cannot fall asleep without that TV on, note that the screen on the TV is also stimulating to the brain. In addition, the brain continues to process sound during sleep and certain sounds can disrupt sleep, such as the sound of conversation on TV. So if you need some background noise to fall asleep, consider implementing white noise instead. This refers to a backdrop of already ambient sound that contains all frequencies at an equal intensity. So white noise can help block out sounds that stimulate the brain and will actually help you sleep more soundly, pun intended this time. Consider using a white noise app, but set it to turn off at a certain time so that you don't have to look at it, look at your smartphone that is to turn it off or perhaps leave a fan on instead throughout the night as your white noise that works too do you have light sensitivity because light is stimulating and signals the brain that it's time to wake up so consider installing blackout curtains or wearing an eye mask to bed like i do do you have sound sensitivity because perhaps your spouse snores and this is a rather common frustration that i here. And I mean literally all I hear all night is snoring. And it can interfere with obtaining quality sleep. So consider wearing earplugs as long as it's safe for you to do so. That is like you have another adult in the home that will wake up if there's an emergency and you don't have an infant, small child or a vulnerable adult that you need to tend to in the middle of the night of course. How is the room temperature? Is it too hot or too cold? Too many blankets or not enough? Well most people seem to sleep best when the temperature is kept slightly Cool. Step two, assess your sleep behavior. This is a big one. First of all, are you getting enough sleep? Now, not everybody needs eight hours of sleep each night. That's actually a myth. Yes, just like the eight glasses of water a day thing. I don't know what the deal is with the number eight. I think it just sounds good and it's even. So some people do just fine with five or six hours a night and then others may need nine. Find out how many hours it will take for you to feel Refresh, and that's your magic number. Maintain a routine bedtime schedule. Set a consistent sleep and wake time. I know you probably have heard of this one before, but it's so vital. Varying your routine may confuse the brain as to when it's time to sleep and when it's time to wake up. So you may have some difficulty adjusting during the first week or two when you do set this schedule, but your body will get used to the new circadian rhythm, trust me. Avoid daytime napping, especially if it's longer than 15 to 20 minutes, because if you nap during the day, it will be more challenging to fall asleep at night. Do nothing else in bed except sleep. 
train your body to think that the bedroom is only for sleep. So don't watch television or play on your laptop or your tablet in bed or complete your work or assignments there. Find a different space for these activities. Avoid caffeine after lunchtime. Besides the obvious coffee though, don't forget about other sources of caffeine such as teas. Yes, even some green teas will have caffeine in it sodas and chocolate. Caffeine is a stimulant. In addition to also acting as a diuretic that will increase urination in the middle of the night. So they're like double whammies because not only will it activate your brain, but it's going to awaken you to go to use the bathroom. Stop alcohol as it is also a diuretic that will increase urination. In addition, although it may help you fall asleep initially, alcohol inherently causes early morning awakenings and avoid cigarettes at night because nicotine is a stimulant and will also keep you awake if you need help on quitting check out my link to this video down below in the description avoid large or heavy or high carb meals at nights and don't go to bed within two hours of consuming a large meal exercise earlier in the day so that you're more tired by nighttime but avoid exercise within four to five hours of bedtime which can actually do the opposite as it releases endorphins that stimulate the brain if watching the news stresses you out limit how much you watch perhaps Start reading about the news instead of watching the more graphic stimulating images on the TV screen. Presidential debate anyone? Drink a cup of warm milk or take a warm bath right at bedtime. Warmth is soothing. Practice meditation and or relaxation techniques. You can see some references and for some examples that I've left below in the description. And yes, there's an app for that. And step three, rule out underlying medical conditions. If the above steps are insufficient, seek your doctor to make sure that there are no underlying medical conditions that interfere with your sleep because poor sleep may not improve until the underlying cause is addressed. And here are some of the more common underlying medical conditions that can interfere with sleep. Here we go. Sleep apnea. Do you snore in the middle of the night? Does your spouse report that you may even momentarily stop breathing during sleep? Well, sleep apnea causes moments of diminished oxygen to the brain and hence people do not obtain that quality of sleep and their fatigue during the daytime. Sleep apnea is also underdiagnosed and can also contribute to hypertension, heart disease, and heart failure if it's left untreated. Restless leg syndrome or RLS. Do you have an unexplainable urge to move your legs at night? That's the best way that I can explain it. RLS is a hereditary neurologic condition that can prevent people from obtaining quality of sleep and it is also underdiagnosed because people don't come in to report it to the doctor. They don't realize that that's not a normal thing. Urinary frequency. Are you awakening to urinate in the middle of the night? I hear this one a lot too. If so, avoid consuming any fluids within two hours of bedtime and then void right before you go to bed. Avoid diuretics like alcohol and caffeine and make certain that there are no medical conditions causing the urination also, such as things like diabetes, prostate issues, or if it's an acute thing, then a urinary tract infection can also do it. Note that some medications may also increase urination, such as diuretics to treat hypertension and heart failure. If you do take those, talk to your doctor about changing the timing of that and take that in the morning instead. Acid reflux. When lying flat, the acidic contents of the stomach are more likely to travel upward from our stomach into our esophagus. It can cause an acidic taste in the mouth. It can cause chest pain or chronic sore throat or a persistent cough even. Certain foods like alcohol, nicotine, and medications can predispose to acid reflux. See my prior video on this topic as well. Pain. Are low back pain and or headache keeping you up at nights? And you will need to address the pain if it's awakening you in the middle of the night. Medication side effects. Some antidepressants and stimulants such as ADHD medications, corticosteroids or chronic opioids even can interfere with sleep. Anxiety and depression. It is more common during the pandemic, of course. If you lie awake at night thinking about all the things that you need to do the next day, as some patients with anxiety report, just get up and make that list and then get it out of the way and go back to bed. Depression and anxiety can also cause early morning awakenings. If the depression or anxiety is enough to impair your sleep or quality of life, 
It may benefit from treatment. Note on medication treatment of insomnia. Over-the-counter options often include melatonin, which I've reviewed in greater detail in a prior video, along with antihistamines. Note that most of the over-the-counter sleep aids are actually antihistamines in disguise and not recommended for most people over the age of 65. You can discuss it with your doctor though if either option, melatonin or antihistamines, are a good option for you before you consider prescription alternatives. If neither work well and you're considering prescription, opt for a non-habit forming option first. There are a number of them. As last resort, a referral to a sleep specialist is an option if the insomnia becomes a persistent issue. Well, I hope I haven't put you to sleep watching this video since you made it this far. Or maybe I do. I don't, I don't know. Well, before I head out, my medical assistants wanted to chime in on this topic too. Here we go. Hey, um, why does little boy hide sugar under his pillow? Why? Because he wanted to have sweet dreams. Oh, that's a great one. Get it? How do you put a baby astronaut to sleep? I don't know. What is it? You rock it. Oh. Great one. Oh, what do you get when you eat cookies in bed? What? A crummy sleep. <laughs> the word crummy is so cute. Thanks for staying for the show. And please hit that red subscribe button. Um, press that notification button below. And also give us a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Well, thanks for tuning in. And sweet dreams until next time.